Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here for another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to go over how to get Windows 10 directly from Microsoft. Now, as of 2017, users of Windows 7 and Windows 8 still have the ability to download and install Windows 10 using the Assistive Technologies route, which is the exact same version of Windows 10. However, you just have to say you're using it with assistive technologies or you need that ability. And as of right now, there has been no end date put on that. If you are installing Windows 10 on a new hard drive or hard disk, you do need to purchase a license. However, Windows does let you completely install the application without entering a product key. Just during installation, you'll say, I do not have a product key. And then after so many days or weeks, you might start getting nag messages. From what I've seen so far, it doesn't appear that they're that threatening, and I believe you can still get Windows updates indefinitely. However, I would definitely consider getting a full license of Windows 10 at some point, because Microsoft is well within their rights to revoke that ability. And for those who are using Windows 7 and Windows 8 that want the completely free and nag-free upgrade and have not done it yet, I would highly recommend you do that. I'm already working on a couple computers that I still have not personally upgraded to Windows 10 and I mean I don't really have any great excuse for them however they're definitely not running Windows XP so I guess I'm still in the clear but that's besides the point I just wanted to make a brief video just showing you guys how to get them directly from Microsoft so I'm gonna just open up our Opera web browser here because I just made a video of Opera. So I figured might as well just use the Opera browser. And we're gonna just type in Windows 10 ISO. That's all you have to do, just Windows 10 ISO in the Google. Should be something that comes up with Microsoft that says download Windows 10 disk image. You wanna open that up. And now you have a few different things you could do here. You can either update your computer now by launching the Update Assistant on your Windows 10 device, which is going to currently update your computer, which is not probably what most of you guys are looking for. You're looking for creating Windows 10 installation media. So you would just download the tool now by clicking on this button right here. And we're going to walk through a few of the steps. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop it's only about 17 and a half megabytes, so it's not too big. And then once it's done, I'm going to open up this executable to run it. It's going to say getting a few things ready here. And now keep in mind, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I am currently on a Windows 10 device. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this video, if any of you guys were wondering. So once you've read through the end user license agreement, you want to click on accept. And this will be the same for everybody, whether you're trying to upgrade your existing computer or you're trying to save an ISO file or an installation media to a different computer. And now this is the point at which you'll have to make a decision whether you're trying to upgrade your current computer or you're trying to create installation media via USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO for another PC. This is what I'm kind of talking about with this video. But you're more than welcome to use this utility to upgrade your existing computer as well. So we're going to click on next just because there's a few more steps we can show. So you want to select the correct language edition and architecture. And if the options are grayed out, you have to uncheck this box that says use the recommended options for this PC because there's a very good chance that the other computer might not have the same recommended options as the one you're currently using. And case in point, this is a virtual environment, so it's recommending a 32-bit installation of Windows 10. However, almost if not all of my computers that I own are 64-bit operating systems, I would select the 64-bit. And you can also do both, but that would honestly slow down your installation a little bit, so it's better if you know what it is before you proceed. So once you select that, you would click on Next. And then you might be prompted again if you uncheck this box just to confirm that this is what you want. And in most cases, you should be able to use the recommended options, but that's not necessarily the case for everybody. And another instance also would be for the addition. If you are running, I believe these are region specific, and this home is single language and Windows 10N, um, I don't think most of you guys would be using most 
people on this video would be Windows 10. If you're not sure where these two are, you're more than welcome to look them up before you download and install because they do have uh, crossover paths all posted online showing what edition you're currently running and what version of Windows 10 you're supposed to install. So keep that in mind and then once we've done that we're going to click on next, click on OK, then we're going to choose our media method either USB or ISO. Keep in mind USB needs to be at least 4 gigabytes of free space. I'd recommend using a free USB disk. I would not put anything else that was existing on it so any personal documents are going to have to go. And you can also do an ISO file and keep in mind also you're going to need probably a DVD in order to burn it. A CD is probably not going to have the capacity you need because it, again it's at least 4 gigabytes so just keep that in mind. And then you click on next and follow the on screen instructions. It will take at least I would say a good 45 minutes to an hour depending on your internet speeds but it's definitely not a five minute process but the good news is it's pretty automatic and then once you're ready to move it over to another computer, it's very straightforward. You just pop in the USB or CD and boot the computer to it, or you plug in the USB while you're in the normal Windows operating environment and then just follow the on-screen instructions to install. So pretty straightforward, and I do hope this brief tutorial helped you guys out, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.